Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Atacama Desert. <laughs> so we've left the safety of San Pedro and driven south about 40 minutes. We're out here in the nature and our first stop is Laguna Seja, which looks beautiful. So we've just paid the entrance fee which cost us about 30 pounds I think uh, or 300,000 um, Chilean pesos and this gives us access to three lagoons today one of which we can swim in although as you can probably see it's pretty cold and I'm cold with clothes on but Craig's trying to convince me to <laughs> <laughs> who wants to see Kirsty swim in a cold lagoon again salty, salt lake salty lagoon <laughs> there are showers so you can get the salt off you afterwards but looking at the map there's a bit of a walk between the lagoon that you swim in and the shower so in my head I'm thinking you've got to walk in your swimwear wet in this icy desert weather <laughs> it's okay so it's we'll gonna see. happen we'll you see. just come to this one location and there's three lagoons here one of which you can swim in also during this video we're going to show you all the main sites in the San Pedro de Atacama area so don't forget to like subscribe and follow for the adventures in our Nissan kicks in the Atacama desert <laughs> and also please don't forget to check out our patron link we'll put it below to help creators like us it really really helps to support our channel and we really appreciate it let's go let's go and see this place <laughs> Apart from obviously the lagoons, this is one of the driest places on earth and we've come during a period of time where it's actually low season so it's a bit cooler as well as this wind coming through. It's about 18 degrees today so it's pretty chilly. We would love to show you how this place looks from the air but unfortunately they have a no drone rule here so it'll just be <laughs> us and our little uh, round cameras. You arrive here along some off-road dirt tracks and then there's a gate and you give your details and you come in, there's a little uh, information uh, hut there and the people waiting there take payment from you and also the guy showed us the walk and the route around the lagoons and uh, the last thing he said was no drones and I was like, oh damn it, you had to say it. Yeah. <laughs> but the scenery around here is incredible as well as the lagoons. Over there in the background you can see Valle de la Luna which we're gonna go and see later and if I pan around this way you can see the Andes mountain chain in the background. They're at very high altitude. San Pedro itself is at about 2,200 meters. So we have been struggling with the altitude a little bit we had yesterday to acclimatize. And as well as that, you can see the awesome volcano there on the horizon as well. But yeah, let's go for a walk around these lagoons. Yeah. Just check this place out as well as the lagoon. So this is Laguna Piedra, which we can swim in, but they've clearly made a path through here from how the terrain usually is. And this is kind of the salty surface that you have in the area. Just look at that. That's quite, it's fairly brittle, but it's very abrasive and sharp. Look at those salt crystals as well. So cool. Let's go and check out this lagoon. Wow, such beautiful colours and so peaceful and tranquil here. Although it does look like it kind of drops off and gets quite deep quite quickly. I'm just, you know, sussing it out ready for when I swim. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's really nice as well. They've got huts so that you can get changed in over there. I can see a couple over there attempting it now and uh, failing by the look of it. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's uh, pretty cold. But first of all, we're gonna walk over to the other lagoon and then come back because that's what they advise you to do. Basically because they want you to minimize the time you're gonna be freezing afterwards. So it's like, go and see the third lagoon, come back to this lagoon, have a swim and run <laughs> for your life back to the showers and in the car. That's my plan anyway. <laughs> and it's about 300 meter from like the edge of the lagoon to the showers. So you're probably about to watch me do a 300 meter sprint in record timing, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> But yeah, for now let's go see the other lagoon. This place is stunning. I love how they put like stones around to make a nice walkway. It's like the calm afford the storm right now. <laughs> it's lovely.
Third Lagoon, Baltinace, and I definitely prefer Baltinace and Piedra Lagoon. Walking between the two of them and all the salt around is absolutely beautiful. I can imagine being here like in the warmer seasons, it would be just a really stunning day, although you wouldn't want to be here when it's too hot because it is a desert. But I think getting in the water would definitely appeal a lot more if it was <laughs> the summer season. But yeah, just the twinkly sun on the water and this nice flat landscape, all nice and light, it's just, yeah beautiful peaceful place just to walk around and the walks are just nice and flat and easy. I'd want to sunbathe here if it was warmer. <laughs> it's nice. Really calm. in the wind let's do this still going in. we're not the only crazy <laughs> let's go and float <laughs> what are you talking about you love going for freezing cold swims oh, yeah. <laughs> look be like this guy he's going straight for it Right, let's go for a float in Piedra. I'm gonna go for a run, <laughs> dunk, and get out and run back. <laughs>
that's uh I don't think that's any warmer than the lagoon. No. <laughs> Go to the lagoon, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Torture. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do it. Oh, the pain of the brain freeze. That hurts a lot. Oh, I think we need to stand in the sun for a few minutes. Just if it wasn't for this wind, it would be more bearable, but that wind makes it so freezing. It's good because they've got these nice little changing huts after you have a shower, so there's a bit of a, a relief from the wind. Relief from the wind. We're Craig and Kirsty, a couple who have been on the road for the past three years sharing our adventures around the world. Right now we're making our way through South America and exploring everything it has to offer. If you enjoy seeing new places and real experiences, please subscribe and welcome to the adventures of Tide Not Travellers. That has to be one of the coldest things we've ever done. Yeah, the showers were moist for you. <laughs> Spanish is coming in handy here. That was just literally, I have genuinely never been so cold in my life. I know I'm cold a lot, but that, oh. I just can't believe how this wind has picked up. That's the one thing I would change about our stay here in San yeah. Pedro. If that wind could go away, that would be yeah. much appreciated. But we're going to jump in the car now and head off to site number two. Yeah, well, we're not going to get freezing cold and um, get in any kind of water at all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> and if that is not worth I like, I don't know what it is. And head over to our Patreon as well, I feel like I've earned that. <laughs> Thankful to be out of that crazy wind. Trying to load the car up was not easy <laughs> with all our wet stuff. But yeah, we're out of the wind, in a nice warm car, and back on the very bumpy road now to the next stop. <laughs> These roads are insane. Hola. We've just driven about 20 minutes further on and we've arrived at Ojos de Salar which is two holes in the ground filled with water and from above I'm sure it looks like two eyes but at each of these sites you arrive at these gates and you stop and you speak to an official and you go inside and you pay an entrance fee to come and see these areas so we're here to see Ojos de Salar and then we drive on another few kilometers and there's a salt flat a bit further on. As you can see, it's still so windy. Just, we wish the wind would just die down a little bit. It's crazy. The best way to see these, obviously you can walk right up to the edge of these two holes in the ground. Here's the first one and then the second one is just over there. We'll walk over there best way to see them really would be from above with the drone but in all these places you come through the gate and they say to you you cannot use the drone and to be honest it's too windy anyway <laughs> but yeah they're called the Oshos de Sara or the eyes of Sara whatever that means just two, two holes in the ground that look like eyes <laughs> just coming over to the second eye hole in the ground make sure I don't get blown into it but this is it so ojos de salar there you go there's one eye and there's the second eye but we've come this way and we're just gonna drive on this way to go to the salt pan if I can make it back to the car in this wind <laughs> this is insane some dry and windy air. I mean I've got pretty fine hair so it dries very quickly anyway but this is like record timing for it to dry. <sighs> so we just came in through the entrance to the viewpoints and they said that they might close the sites because... Oh wow! It's flying away. 
So we just came into the entrance, hopefully we're going to see some sights here, but they said they might have to close it off because the weather's that bad or the wind is that strong. So we're going to have to be super quick and hopefully get to see it before they maybe shut it. Yeah, these winds are crazy. Here we are at Laguna Trebanquiche. It's a vast, almost like salt flat. There is water in this one, so it's not completely dry. The man on the gate at the entrance said to us, uh, be very careful because of the high winds, don't get too close to the edge. So I think you can punch through the thin uh, top layer of the salt. I can see some red parts of the lake as well. It's really cool and there's supposed to be uh, some Chilean flamingos here. But yeah, they also said because of the high winds that they might have to close the site. Uh, so we're hoping <laughs> it can just hold off long enough so that we can take this footpath around the edge just to see it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll make it around. Fingers crossed. This weather is mental. <laughs> just check out the blood red colour of that little lagoon there. And then the beautiful whites and pastel colours of the main lagoon over there. Spectacular. A nice little family of Chilean flamingos just here. How nice of them just to be right here at the viewing point. Having a little wander around, a little wander around right here in front of us. They didn't seem bothered by the wind at all. <laughs> so not true. I was a little bit worried we wouldn't see flamingos because of the wind, but I think they're actually probably still here because of the wind, because they can't really take off and fly in this. Yeah, Maybe. But yeah, it's really cool to see them. They're just in these little red lagoons at the edge of the main lagoon, just feeding off of the algae on the bottom. Amazing to see them. Even the feathers nice and pink. Yeah. <laughs> There's also an incredible backdrop to this with the Andes there and the volcano right there. I don't know if you can see it, but there is just that layer of dust. It's like a dust storm because of this wind that's kind of putting a blanket in front of that backdrop. But trust me, it's stunning. The car is not I feel easy. like I'm doing a skydive, but completely different to a skydive. <laughs> wow. Getting in and out of the car with this wind is not easy. <laughs> I think blowing everywhere. Doors become weapons. Yeah. <laughs> of mass destruction. <laughs> it's taken out multiple times already. <laughs> wow. So we're just heading off to Valle de la Luna now and we thought we'd have a little bit of lunch in the car. That's something I need to point out as well, that it's quite tricky to find places to uh, buy lunch in San Pedro. We tried yesterday and thankfully our lovely accommodation just said, don't worry, just make yourself a sandwich when you get a breakfast in the morning. So yeah, we now have sandwiches on the road. I've got cheese, avocado and tomato sandwich and Craig's got a ham and cheese sandwich that he'll eat in a second. But yeah, we've, it's now two o'clock so we kind of got to get a move on. <laughs> So it's lunch on the go today because we have to be at Valle de la Luna before four o'clock because it closes so we need to get a move on. <laughs> Definitely a top tip is bring everything you need with you because there is nothing out here in the desert. That sounds like a crazy thing to say but there really is nowhere to buy anything. We've got water, cookies, sweets, snacks, sandwiches, everything with us, sun cream, yeah, towels, everything because yeah the facilities out here are pretty uh, non-existent. <laughs> so yeah, top tip there, just bring everything with you if you do this.
this sandstorm and this wind is no joke. It's pretty crazy. I don't think we're going to see much at Valle de la Luna at this rate. Oh my gosh, look at this. We've just driven about 50 minutes and as you may have noticed from the footage it is insanely windy and driving through the desert there's just been very low visibility. Um, we've arrived here at Valle de la Luna as you can see and it's all closed up but so, there is this sign. <laughs> I really appreciate the artwork though, it's basically just showing you a nice little art version of what we've just been driving through. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's obviously shut due to the high winds, I think we're going to have to cut something out of our day tomorrow to yeah. come back and see it. We've spoken to a few people today who, and yesterday as well, who have said these winds are so unusual, we've never seen this before. And we have heard this so many times uh, during our travels over the last couple of years that unusual weather is, uh, is so frustrating. But I think the wind is supposed to die down. Hopefully it will stop today. Um, so that we uh, have a clean run at these these places, these sites over the next couple of days. Yeah, but for now we're going to get out of the wind before we get blown away and just go and take the afternoon to rest. <laughs> and maybe get up extra early tomorrow and get started so we can squeeze this in in the morning. But yeah, might just have a quick little look around this building but uh, I think we'll have to pick up at Valle de la Luna tomorrow before the, the wind seemed to pick up at about 11 a.m. So yeah, we're going to have to have a very early start and come straight here, I think. This is one of the main places to see in San Pedro. Whoa! <laughs> this wind is insane! Unbelievable! Just look at all that dust that's blowing across. This is the entrance to Valle de la Luna here. I assume you go in the visitor centre, pay the entrance fee and then drive on through. Hopefully we'll get to find out tomorrow. <laughs>